Okay, in this video, we're going to look at some simple, little, handy circuits. Now, these circuits will be easy to build, and you could actually incorporate them into your projects. Now, if you look at the breadboard, you can see I have a 5 millimeter red LED, a very common item. And you can see it's got a current limiting resistor. I also have another LED, this one here. Looks the same as a 5, five millimeter red LED, but this is a flashing LED. So if I put this onto the breadboard, I don't need a current limiting resistor. I just hook it up to from 3 to 12 volts and I have a little flashing LED. So it would make your code a little bit simpler if you want a flashing LED from a microcontroller. You just have to turn on a GPIO pin on the microcontroller and you don't have to incorporate the flash function into your code. So it simplifies your code quite a bit. So that's just a little handy circuit, a little flashing LED. Okay, here's my standard LED with a current limiting resistor. Now if I take that LED out and put it in series with my flashing LED, I could actually create a flashing LED from my standard LED by putting it in series with the flashing LED. So here we could control another device using our flashing LED. And we could actually use multiple LEDs. It will flash multiple LEDs. So here one flashing LED is, is flashing the other two LEDs in series. Okay, here's a relay made by Potter and Brumfield. It looks like your typical relay. If you look at the bottom, at the terminal connections, we can see the coil connections. That's these two terminals here. That's what energizes the coil. And this is a two-pole double-throw relay. And here's your contacts here. Now this is a special relay. It's called a sensitive relay. If you look at the front, it only takes two milliamps through the coil to energize this relay. So all we need is two milliamps through these two terminals to turn on this relay. So if we, had a, if we had an Arduino Nano in your project, we could actually drive this relay directly from one of its GPIO pins without any drivers or transistors. So if you have a project where you need to drive some heavy loads and you don't have room for, a, for an interface board, you can just wire up the Nano's GPIO directly into this relay and you can drive some heavy loads. Okay, I have my sensitive relay wired in series with my flashing LED. So my relay is turning on and off in time with the flashing LED. So when the LED comes on, my relay is energized. And when the flashing LED is off, the relay is de-energized. Now all I had to do is add a couple of diodes, that's some protection diodes, to protect uh, the flashing LED. So this is probably the simplest flashing circuit that you could build. Now if you want to drive a standard relay with a flashing LED, you need a little buffer, like this little transistor buffer, because the flashing LED cannot handle the current of a, of a normal relay. So I'll activate it. I'll connect my relay up to my little driving circuit, which is being controlled by the flasher. You can see this is a standard, standard relay driven by the flashing LED. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. Now this is the flashing LED driving a relay circuit. Now to drive a standard relay that has a coil resistance of about 120 ohms, we need a buffer to drive the relay because the flashing LED doesn't have enough current drive to, to drive a standard relay. So we're using a MOSFET, a VN10KM, to drive the relay. So when the flashing LED comes on, there'll be a voltage drop across the 680 ohm resistor and that will be fed into the gate of the MOSFET transistor which will drive the relay. Well, this MOSFET can drive up to 300 milliamps so we could put any other load in here that you want besides a relay to drive it in correspondence with the flashing LED or we could use this point here as a clock input to say uh, a clock source for a 4000 series CMOS uh, gates so we could have a, a, a clock input corresponding to the flashing uh, rate of the LED. So it's a pretty handy circuit, pretty versatile circuit that you could use in your projects. Okay, in this circuit, we're going to talk about optocouplers. Now, usually when we talk about optocouplers, we talk about switching something on and off, like a microcontroller switching on and off a high voltage switch. So we use an optocoupler so there's no backfeed of the high voltage into the microcontroller. So it's more of a safety feature. So sometimes we want to transmit analog information with optical isolation. And we could do that also with an optocoupler. So here in the schematic, we're using the 4N35 optocoupler. So we need an optocoupler that has the base connection available at one of the pins on the IC. So the first thing that we do, we feed 10 milliamp constant current 
into the emitter, that's the LED, and that will drive it, the LED into linear mode. So now we can feed an audio signal into the emitter, and that will modulate the light on the LED that's falling onto the detector. Now the detector is also in linear mode by these two resistors. It's biased into linear mode. So the light that's modulated from the emitter will fall on the detector and we'll get an output, an audio output on the, on the emitter. So it's an uh, emitter follower. And we'll get audio output that's isolated from the audio in. Now the audio out will be less than the audio in because there's no gain through the, uh, through the optocoupler. So in our next clip we're going to actually talk about constant current sources. So we could use that information uh, to build this little constant current source to drive this LED. Okay, here's a simple and handy constant current circuit to drive an LED. Now when we usually drive an LED, we put a resistor in series with the LED to limit the current to a safe value. So if you run your, your circuit at 5 volts or 12 volts or 24 volts, you have to change the resistor each time to limit the current to a safe value. But if you use a constant current source like this one here, this is a JFET that's in series with the LED, so we could adjust the voltage across the circuit from 5 volts to 30 volts and the current through the, through the LED will only change about 2 milliamps. So we could put a nanometer in series with the circuit and we could adjust the voltage from 5 volts to 30 volts and we could monitor the current through the LED. Okay, I have a nanometer connected in series with my LED circuit and I'm applying 5 volts across the circuit so we are reading 13.7 milliamps. So if we take it up to 10 volts, there's 10, there's 15, 20, 25, and we're up to 30 volts. So we'll take it back down to 5 volts. We're back down to 5 volts. So this circuit would be handy to be used in a battery-powered project where your battery voltage will slowly decrease or where the power supply to your project will vary. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my constant current LED driver. I'm using an N-channel JFET, which is basically in series with the LED, and the gate is connected to the source on the JFET. So it's a one-component solution where we have 5 volts to 30 volts applied to the circuit, and we get a constant current going through the circuit through the LED about 15 milliamps. So instead of this LED, we can replace this LED with an electronic circuit, and in a harsh environment where your voltage of your power supply will vary, you know that you'll get a constant current to your electronic circuit. So it's a very simple and easy circuit to build. So I hope this video gives you some ideas how you could use these handy circuits in your projects.